welcome to Faith Revolution Church online service. Really, really happy that you can be a part of our service today as we seek to worship God in spirit and in truth. Before we start anything, let's go before God in prayer. Bow your heads with me as we pray together. Father, we give you all the glory and all the appreciation is on to you, Father, for the opportunity to be before you today to worship you as one to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, Lord, that your spirit will fill us all up, that we may worship you aright today in the name of Jesus. Everything we will do before you today, Lord, we bring forward and say, Father, come and be a part of it. Come and fellowship with us. Come and touch our lives. That through it all, Father, we may be blessed and you be fully glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty and awesome name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Again, welcome and welcome. If this is the first time you're joining us for our service, I say welcome. You are now a part of our family and we're glad to have you with us. If you've always been a part of us, you too, welcome. We are, as well as always, going to worship God. And what are we going to do? We are going to praise the living God together as the FRC Worship Band leads us in praise. We are going to pray together. Pastor Darren will minister to us in prayer. And then we're going to share the word of God together. We're going to seek to hear what God has to say today. Those are the three essential pieces of a worship service. And we'll do that today. And as we go through each session, God will indeed be glorified. So, is there any, way to, any better way to start a service than praising God? There's none. And we want to go right into it right now and ask the FRC worship band to lead us in praise. And as they sing, I want to employ you to sing along. If you know the song, sing along. If you don't, even just meditate on the words themselves and your heart will be lifted up in Christ.
ceases from your lips in the name of Jesus. That always praise will flow forth from you. The praise of the living God. Just make it so and you would see how lifted up your heart will be, how lifted up your spirit will be. Amen. Again, I say welcome to you all. It truly is a wonderful thing to be together in the presence of the Almighty God. I pray that you are keeping safe. I pray that this year has started on a good note for you. You know, highly, we are all highly expectant of what God is going to do this year. And for us as a church, this is our year of fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. Even in the midst of everything happening all around, God has promised us full joy. And we'll look forward to that. So it means that even as things happen all around you, all around this world, the joy of the Lord that is in you will be a blessing unto all around you. Be a source of joy and it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. Um, a few things I want to bring to our attention as we progress. It is simply this. If you want to bless another, a good way of doing that is to share, you know, uh, an inspiring video like our service today. So I want to employ you, like our videos as well, that encourages us, in, include your comments on there. We'll read them all and see what you have to say. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of content, good content, for you to feed your souls with. And it shall be well with us all in Jesus' name. Also, I want to encourage you that as you are a part of the FRC family, Ensure you know all about us. I want to encourage you to go on our website to you know, just browse through what is there, read you know, our pages on there, and you can find that at faithrevolution.ca, faithrevolution.ca. And if it is that you want to reach out via email, you can send an email directly to me at pastor at faithrevolution.ca, and I'll be sure to respond to you. And I look forward to hearing from you. Amen. Um, next, in, uh, in this worship session, we are going to pray together. And I want to pass it over to Pastor Daring to minister to us in prayer. Over to you, Pastor Daring. Hi, everyone. My name is Daring Bello. And thank you for joining me in prayers today. Um, even before we jump into prayers, if we can actually just do all we can to take away any distractions and set our eyes on God. We're coming before god the everlasting father and we're not coming before man you know even as um christ shared a, a parable in the new testament he said you know you know he shared the, the word of god said he shared the parable you know saying that men ought to pray and not faint um even as every time we show up before the lord to pray you know um i pray that the lord will grant you grace and strength in the place of prayer that you will not faint and you and i will not be weary of seeking his face in the place of prayer. Amen. Today we're going to take prayer points from the book of Psalms, chapter 1. I'm reading from the Amplified Version, and we'll take prayers even as we go ahead. Um, but before we jump into the Word of God, as usual, we want to start by giving the Lord the praise and the thanksgiving, um, the praise that he is worthy of. So I just want you to reflect on God's faithfulness in your life around you. You know, lift up your hands, lift up a song, whatever comes into your heart, and let's go before him with praise. 
everlasting father ancient of days we praise you we exalt your holy name we magnify you great are you lord greatly to be praised you are worthy of our praise you are worthy of our adoration you are worthy to be lifted high our soul and our heart and our tongue magnifies you all that is within us gives you the praise lord we thank you for life we thank you for sustenance we thank you for each day that you bring us into and we thank you for loading each day daily even with your benefits and your mercy all the glory all the honor all the adoration be unto you in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen still in last year of thanksgiving i want us to just lift up our voices for breaking us and thank the Lord for bringing us into this year. I know, yes, it's some few days into January, but honest, there's something that we cannot take for granted more and more. Our tomorrow is not granted. Our tomorrow is not confirmed. For for every day, you and I wake up to see a new day, to see a new year. It is truly something to be thankful for. And I just want you to stand before the Lord and thank him for bringing you even into this year. You and everyone around you, your family, and I want to just, I want you to lift up your voice and just give God the glory for yourself and for the circumstances around you. Ancient of this, we just want to thank you for this year, 2021. We thank you for life, Father Lord. We thank you for bringing us into this year, Father Lord. We thank you for every day of this year that you continue to sustain us, that you continue to uphold us, that you continue to strengthen us. All the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. I stand in the gap, Father Lord, today and thank you for the Church Faith Revolution Church, for keeping us even as a church, even into this year, 2021. We thank you for how you continue to uphold this ministry. Ministry. We thank you for how you strengthen this ministry. We thank you for strengthening our pastor, Pastor Nee, and for keeping us as a body of believers, even all the way to 2021. We thank you for the joy, Father Lord, you're bringing us into even this year. All the glory. All the honor, all the adoration be unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for praying with me. Still in the attitude of prayer um, and jumping into the book of Psalms, chapter 1. I read again from the Amplified Version. It says, blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following the advice and example, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers, ridiculers. And verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, his precepts and his teaching, and he habitually meditates day and night. Amen. So there's a qualification for the person that is called blessed there. And when you think blessed, it's fortunate, prosperous, favored by God. And he talks about this person that does not hang around with the wicked, that does not stand about just doing nothing, or that does just not sit down even with scoffers and ridiculers, but that this person's focus, frankly, is delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law. And he habitually meditates day and night on this. And you're like, where exactly is the prayer point here? The one thing I want us to come from a realization, from a very pragmatic realization is because of the continuous shutdown, it has become very, very easy for some of us to assemb to basically abandon the assemble of believers. It has become much more difficult to fellowship. And frankly, it becomes very easy to, you know, just hang out watching movies all day, hang out streaming Netflix all day. The amount of times we spend just maybe just hanging out or on WhatsApp chatting is nothing compared sometimes to the time we spend meditating. Some of us have actually falling into patterns that are very different from the patterns which we had before. And frankly, it's become very easy to abandon even just meditation and seeking God's face because there's no one to remind you, because there's no fellowship that's available to keep you accountable. But this is the Bible reminds, reminding us that there's a blessing that is attached to that person whose delight is in the law of God, whose delight is in the word of God. There's a blessing that is attached to that person that is meditating on everything everything that is of God day and night. So I just want you to lift up your voice and say, Lord, in this season, strengthen me. Do not let me abandon the fellowship with believers. Do not let me lose sight of God's word. Do not let me fall into habits that distance me 
from God. Strengthen me. Strengthen me and help me keep my focus on God and keep my focus on Christ. Let us pray. Ancient of this King Almighty, even with everything that has happened, Father Lord, with the shutdown and the impact, Father Lord, of everything that's happened around us, it's become very, very easy for us to get lost, Father Lord, in patterns, Father Lord, that has taken us away from you. Lord, we're asking that, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us and bring us close, Father Lord. Strengthen us, ancient of days, where we have lost focus, Father Lord, where the zeal for everything concerning you has gone cold, Father Lord, where the zeal for your work, Father Lord, has totally been ignored, ancient of days. We come before you, King Almighty. We say, reignite that zeal in us. Help us to come back to you, Father Lord. Strengthen us, King Almighty. Teach us to delight in your word. Teach us to delight in your ways. Teach us to delight in your truth, everlasting Father. Grant us the discipline to seek after you, to meditate on your word day and night, ancient of days. Draw us closer to you. Reveal more and more of you. Holy Spirit, teacher, counselor, guide. Guide us in the truths of God. Teach us the truth, the daily truth of God's word, even in this season, that your name might be glorified in our midst. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Now, the word of God clearly says there's a blessing that comes from it. The blessed, they are blessed. That person is fortunate. That person is prosperous. That person is favored by God. And I want you to just lift up your voice and pray for yourself. That Lord, as I seek your face and abandon, Father Lord, walking in the counsel of the wicked. And I abandon standing in the path of sinners. And I abandon sitting down with scoffers. As I delight in you, everlasting Father, let me be blessed in 2021. Let fortune come my way. Let prosperity come my way. Let the favor of God come my way in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Ancient of days, as we seek you, Father Lord, as we delight in you and no other, as we delight in your way and your purpose for us, as we abandon the counsel of the wicked, Father Lord, we ask, let us be blessed. Let our lives be blessed. Let our circumstances be blessed, ancient of days. Let us be fortunate in you. Let us find favor in you, Father Lord. Let us find mercy in you, ancient of this. Let us find prosperity in you, Father Lord. Not the one that comes from the world that is fickle and does not last, Father Lord, but enduring prosperity, that our soul will be prosperous, that our minds will be prosperous, that our physical bodies will be prosperous, that in financially we will be prosperous, Father Lord. King Almighty, that is our prayer today. According to your word, let it be so for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Still going through this Bible verse. Verse 2 says, It will be like a tree, firmly planted and fed by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season. Its leaf does not wither. Whatever it does, it, pros it, pros it prospers. Again, the word prosperity and comes to maturity. I just want you to pray for yourself. I want you to pray for your home. I want you for the homes you, rep you represent. I want you to pray for your children, for those that have kids. I want you to put your hands over yourself because you are your own priest and pray over yourself that, Lord, in 2021, let me be like that tree that is firmly planted by the streams of water. Let me yield my fruit in this season. Father, Lord, because I am planted by the streams of water, let every need in my life be satisfied by you, ancient of days. Do not let me wither in this season, Father Lord. Do not let me go, Father Lord, to destruction in this season, King Almighty. Do not let me fade away, Father Lord, into obscurity in this season, King Almighty. But feed me from the streams of your water and let me yield my fruit in this season. Let us pray. Ancient of this King Almighty, plant us. Father Lord, in this season, let us be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. As we delight in your word, as we delight in your truth, ancient of days, I join my faith with everyone praying with me today. Father Lord, plant us, Father Lord. Firmly plant us, Father Lord, in a way that we will not fall, Father Lord. Firmly plant us in the way, King Almighty, that we will yield great fruit, Father Lord. Let our fruits, Father Lord, be yielded in this season in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, as you plant us, feed us, Father Lord. Meet our 
every need from your streams of water. Let us not find any lack, ancient of this. Every need in our life, Father Lord, whatever that need might be, whether need financially, whether need spiritually, whether need, Father Lord, in milestones which we've set, Father Lord, for ourselves, Father Lord, meet us at our point of needs in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, for us to bear fruit according to your word, Father Lord, according to your truth, Father Lord, from the very beginning, which you've commanded to be fruitful, to multiply, to have dominion, Father Lord. Even in this season 2021, make a way for us, Father Lord, to have this fruit. Those that are looking unto you to bear fruit, Father Lord, and to be settled in their homes. Those that are looking unto you to bear fruit, Father Lord, and to have their own children. Those that are looking unto you to bear fruit in ministry, fruit in career, fruit in their work with you, ancient of this, financial fruit, fruit of good health, Father Lord, whatever the needs, Father Lord, of our, of our hearts, Father Lord, feed us from your street, streams of water and let us bear fruit. Father Lord, it is said of this tree that is planted, firmly planted, it says that this leaf will not wither. Ha! For leaf to wither, Father Lord, is to dry up and to die. Father Lord, I decree over every one of us, anyone praying with me today, with the body of believers in Faith Revolution Church, we will not wither in Jesus' name. We will not die before our time in Jesus' name. With long life, you will satisfy us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, as concerning our lives, our destinies, and our purpose, our purposes, what you have ordained for us, will not we that nothing in the mighty name of Jesus. King Almighty, the ever present help, you will send help and enablement. Father Lord, for us to truly thrive, for our purposes to thrive, that we will not be like a leaf that will wither into obscurity in the mighty name of Jesus. Ever present help again, we call you to be our helper in this season. Father Lord, to send those help. Help, divine help us, Father Lord, in this season, divine enablement and divine empowerment, even in this season. Father Lord, that's we, Father Lord, truly may bear fruits according to your purpose of us in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for praying with me. I truly do appreciate this time together. Again, if the Lord is doing something in your life, if the Lord has done great things, we would love to hear from you. Send us a note at contact at faithrevolution.ca. I know the prayer answering God will show up for you. He will not feel as concerning you. Everything he has said as concerning you, he will bring it to pass. So shall it be for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Again, thank you for praying with me. God bless you mighty. Amen. May God continue to answer all the petitions that we bring before him in the name of Jesus. God has been so good to us. He's always answered our prayers. And we pray that nothing will separate us from our Father in heaven, that, that our prayers may continue to be answered in Jesus' name. Um, right now, we'll go into the word of God today, into what God has in store for us today. But before we do that, let's pray together. Father, thank you, God, for this opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to be fed with your word. Lord, as we go into your word for today, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you open our hearts, open our minds, O oh God, to what you have to say. That, O oh God, that our souls may be fed, O oh God, that our spirit may be lifted up in you in the name of Jesus. That, Heavenly Father, we may have, O oh God, your word in us because that is what comes out of us when our back is to the wall father in heaven as we go through your word come O god and grant understanding in jesus mighty and awesome name we are prayed amen and amen god is indeed worthy to be praised he's worthy of all honor he is the faithful one he is the righteous one and his voice cannot be silenced the word of God today for us is simply titled the fruit of the spirit and you. The fruit of the spirit and you. That is the word of God for us today. Because when we consider the fruit of the spirit, what does that mean? We'll dig a little deeper into what it means when we talk about the fruit of the spirit. Because an understanding of that will help us understand where we stand in that, in the fruit of the Spirit. So, the fruit 
of the Spirit and you. So I want to encourage you to just flow along with me on this journey. And the way it will progress is this. This is actually a four-week sermon, and it's all about the fruit of the Spirit. Today, we're going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit in its entirety. And then for the next three weeks, we'll talk about the nine elements of the fruit of the Spirit as contained in the book of Galatians chapter 5. So that is, you know, our study for the next four weeks. But for today, we're going to look at it in its entirety. The fruit of the Spirit and you. And this study is really based on understanding what fruit is. What fruit is and how that translates to a spiritual element in Christ. The fruit of the Spirit and you. Now, I'm not going to start with just listing the fruit of the Spirit and then going forward from there. No, there's a, there's a very important verse that is a precursor to understanding the fruit of the Spirit. And that is something that Christ said in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 5. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 5. What did Christ um, say in that particular verse? He says, I am the vine, you are branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. That particular verse makes it clear to us that bearing fruit, we have to be in Christ. We have to be in Christ and Christ has to be in us. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Simply put, you have to be born again. So I really employ you, if you are listening to my voice right now and you are not born again, by the power of the mighty King that is at work, I pray you will accept him this day in the name of Jesus. What does it take to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior? It's the confession that indeed Christ is your Savior. It's that simple. He has already done all the work. He's already paid all the price. You just have to accept him. It is not something that is said to me or to anyone else. It is between you and God. So I pray that this day you would face Christ and say to him, you are my Lord and Savior. Save my soul and it shall be so unto you in the name of Jesus. For every one of you that is born again, being born again is step one in our journey in Christ. Being born again is step one. Just like when a new baby, when a baby is born anew, that is step one. Then the baby starts to grow in same thing in Christ. Then once you're born again, then you find your place in Christ and you grow in Christ. Amen. And Christ is saying that as you grow in him, to grow in him, you have to be in him. You have to remain in him. It's not just to open the door, peek through it and say, yeah, Christ, I'm for you. Okay, I'll see you later. No, it is that you are in Christ and you will remain in him. As you remain in him, turn that around, he will remain in in you, he will abide in you, he will live in you. As you live in Christ, he will live in you. That coexistence now happens between you and Christ. That's the first part, that's the first step of your journey in Christ. And also that's the first step of bearing fruit. It is not that automatically once you're born again, you begin to bear fruit, no. Once you're born again, then you have to put in the effort to bear fruit. That is very, very necessary. Because without Christ, there's no fruit bearing. But when you are in Christ, the way he said it in where we've just read in John chapter 15, verse 5, it says you bear much fruit. Pay attention. 
He didn't say fruits. It's also fruit singular. Fruit singular. It's important to know that. Because Christ says, for without me, you can do nothing. So the fruit that he's referring to, the fruit that is the focus of our attention today, can only be born through Christ. Through Christ. It is not something that is in your strength or my strength or anyone's strength. It is done in Christ. The fruit of the Spirit is in Christ. You bear the fruit of the Spirit in Christ. And it shall be so unto you in the name of Jesus. So with that knowledge that you know what, that the fruit of the Spirit, that we bear that in Christ, then now we need to think of it. What is the fruit of the Spirit? What is the fruit of the Spirit? And we don't need to look any further than in the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23. I know most of you have already memorized the nine elements of the fruit of the Spirit. Well, let's read it together. And I read again from the New King James Version. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Against such, there is no law. May the Lord bless the reading of his words. Now, these are the elements of the fruit of the Spirit. And to help us understand that, when you go to the supermarket, when you go to any market to, bear, to buy fruit, what do you do? You look at the fruit from afar, it looks good, so you walk towards it. When you get there and you pick up the fruit, now one, it looks good. Okay, one element, check mark. And you look at the fruit. Okay, when you hold it in your hand, it feels good. Check mark number two. You look for any blemishes, there's none. Check mark number three. You look to it to see if it's plump. Check mark number four. You look at the fruit. And then when you taste the fruit, I'm not saying you should taste the, fruit, taste the fruit before buying it, but when you do buy it and you taste the fruit, you expect it to be sweet. You expect it to taste like the fruit you bought. Do you expect, right? So you expect an apple to taste like an apple, an orange to taste like an orange, and you expect an orange to be sweet. You expect an apple to be sweet. You expect pineapple to be sweet. You expect any fruit you buy to be sweet, to have the right taste. So when you, want, when you buy a piece of fruit, that's your expectation. Concerning the fruit of the Spirit, there are certain expectations as well. There are certain things that make up the fruit of the Spirit, which is the nine elements we just read together. So those nine elements are your check marks when it comes to the fruit of the Spirit. So when we now turn it around and then you look at yourself, what fruit are you bearing? What are the elements of the fruit that you are bearing? And those are the pieces that we will look at, you know, in subsequent um, weeks, in the next three weeks. We will look at those elements in detail. But concerning fruit, there's something about fruit that also we need to understand. An expectation is that when you bear fruit, when you bear fruit, fruit. It's for a purpose. There are three key purposes to bearing fruit. The first purpose is that it is for your own consumption, for you. When you bear fruit, you also bear it onto yourself. Don't always think of fruit that you bear the fruit is for others. Think of it first that you bear fruit, for yourself. Now, the second thing to consider is that, of course, as is very evident, when you bear fruit, it's for others. So you also bear fruit to give. You give out fruit. And just as a quick illustrator, when you talk about love, which is one of the elements, the first element of the fruit of the Spirit, you love yourself. Amen. 
you also love others. So you love yourself and you also give love to others. The third purpose for that um, of a fruit is simply this. You also receive it. Not the fruit that you bear now, but that someone else has born. Now you receive. So, three purposes. Fruit, your own fruit for you. Your own fruit for others. The fruit of others for you. Again, using love as an example. We've already said that you love yourself. You love others. And then others love you. Others love you. Don't ever think that it's one way that you bear fruit out from you, out from you. There's your fruit out from you, your fruit into yourself, and the fruit of others to you. Always look for those three purposes in your life. Always look for those three purposes in your life. Because that's what makes that's what makes it right when we fellowship with each other. Uh, you're bearing fruit. I'm bearing fruit. Every one of us that's born again, we are bearing fruit. What fruit? The fruit of the Spirit. And that fruit of the Spirit is being distributed amongst us. As you're bearing fruit, you're taking some for yourself. You're giving some out. You're getting fruit from others. That's the way it should be. The fruit of the Spirit. Always be ready to have these three elements in your life. Now, a key part of this that I want to talk about is really the characteristic of fruit. There are many to be listed, but there are three key ones I want to talk about today. When it comes to fruit bearing, what are these three key elements, these th three key characteristics that we need to talk about. The first characteristic is this. In every fruit, there is seed. In every fruit, there is seed. What's the purpose of the seed in a fruit? The purpose of the seed in a fruit is for replication. So a fruit brings forth more fruit. A fruit brings forth more fruit. Consider any fruit you want on the face of this planet. They all have seeds in them. Every single one of them. They all have seeds in them. Whether you talk about apples or bananas or pineapple or guava or anything. Anything that is a fruit. Small or big, as small as a grape, as big as a watermelon, they all have seeds in them. They all have seeds in them. And that seed is for replication, for multiplication. So when you think of bearing fruit, every fruit you bear must have seed in it. That is the ability to further replicate. Again, consider love. Though we'll talk more about love next week, but consider love as an example today. When you bring forth love out of you, as you love another, as you love self, that love replicates. Because when one person loves another, the other that has just received love, loves another. That, and that person loves another. You see how it just keeps replicating. But when love gets cut off within a person, it stops replicating. It stops as a fruit. So that person just consumes the fruit, doesn't allow it to replicate. Don't let the replication of fruit stop with you. Don't let the replication of the fruit of the Spirit stop with you. Never put yourself in the position of just receiving without giving. Once you receive, don't keep for yourself. Let it replicate and move it on. Pass it on. You always have to pass it on like a seed. Pass it on. Ensure that it's replicated. 
when you take love into yourself, when you consume the fruit of love, when you, when you take love into yourself, imagine how much lifted up you are. And then you are ready to give love. As you take in love, you are ready to give love. But never let it stop with you. So the first thing to consider is that seed in fruit is always there. And that's what leads to replication of the fruit. The second thing I want to talk about is that fruit is always ready to eat. We don't cook fruit. You could if you wanted to. Of course, there's, uh, I'm, I'm not, you can have a million different recipes on what to do. You can bake it, you can cook it, you can roast it, you can do all of that. But you don't have to. I'm just saying here, I'm not really talking about cooking on, you know, and all of that good stuff. It's just to say that it is ready to eat as is. You can choose to do whatever you want with it. But a fruit, I'm talking about a physical fruit, it is ready to eat. When you have a guava in your hand, it's ready to eat. When you have an apple in your hand, it's ready to eat. When you have a grape in your hand, even if it just came off the bunch, even if it just came off the fruit tree, it is ready to eat at that point in time. There's no further preparations required. Again, using love as an example. When you produce love in you, there is no preparation required, no further preparation of love. It's not that you have to go do something to prep yourself to be able to give love. No. Love is always ready. It's always, we are always ready to give love. And always be ready to receive love. Always be ready to receive love. Don't let it be that you can only be in a certain frame of mind, in a certain state to receive love. If someone is coming at you with, you know, with, a, with loving intent, it's like, stay away from me type thing. No. Always be ready to receive love. That's the nature of love. There's no preparation required. Always be ready to give love. Always be ready to consume love for yourself. Always be ready to do that. There is no preparation required for fruit to be functional. There is no preparation required. Always keep that in mind. Now, the third thing that I want to uh, talk about in terms of the characteristics of fruit, like I said, there are so many, but it's only three I want to talk about, is that sometimes fruit can be better. Fruit can be better. In the example that I gave earlier in terms of you going to purchase a piece of fruit and you get to the market, you get to the fruit stall and you start to pick out the ones you want. You know, you want this, you want that. Imagine that it all looks good and then you pay for it and take a bite out of it and it's rotten inside. How disappointed would you be? Or that you take a bite out of it and there's no sweetness in it. There's no sweetness in it at all. Or you get to the store even before you buy. It's so blemished, you can't even imagine sinking your teeth into it. That's the reality of life. The fruit we bear has always has to be good fruit. And God will help us in Jesus' name. So fruit can be better. That's why Christians, we, the children of the Most High God, we always have to examine the fruit that we are bearing. Is it good fruit? Concerning the fruit of the Spirit, concerning the elements of the fruit of the Spirit, is it complete? That's what good fruit means. For the fruit to be good, it means the essential elements are all there. So when you bear fruit, when your life bears fruit, the essential elements, which is the nine as listed in Galatians chapter 5 that we read together, as listed in Galatians chapter 5, we see it right there. And it's very clear. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All these elements must always be found in your life. If 
any is absent, that fruit could be better. If any needs some work, that fruit could be better. It could be better. And Jesus talked about this fruit even a bit more in the book of Matthew chapter 7. If we actually read it from verse 15 to 20, that tells us the full story. But I'll only focus on verse 18 to 20 of Matthew chapter 7. This is part of the Sermon on the Mount that Christ gave. Uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 18. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. He was talking about false prophet as bearing bad fruit, but he's referring to you as bearing good fruit. Bad fruit, good fruit, or by their fruit, you would know them. So how are you recognized? By the fruit you bear. By the fruit that comes forth from you. And though it's the fruit of the Spirit, its elements are recognizable in the physical. If you're loving, it will be clear. If you're at peace, it will be clear. If you have joy in you, it will be clear. If you long suffer with another, it will be clear. Goodness in you, it will be clear. Kindness, very clear. Faithfulness, clear. Gentleness, very clear. What about self-control? Very clear. Those are the elements that should define you, that should define me, that should define us all in the body of Christ. The fruit that we bear. The fruit that we bear. What are its elements? Is any element missing? If any element is missing, the whole fruit, the whole fruit can easily be rejected. And I pray you would never be rejected in the name of Jesus. Through it all, what is abundantly clear and necessary is that you need to work on bearing good fruit. You need to work on bearing good fruit. Now, that leads us to a very important question. How do you work on it? How do you ensure that your fruit is good? And I take us back to where we started in John chapter 15. In John chapter 15 verse 5, where Christ said very clearly, For without me, you can do nothing. So, if you know there is any element of the fruit of the Spirit missing in your life, or needing some work, it is not something that you can fix on your own. You need Christ. You need the Holy Spirit. It's the, it's the fruit of the Spirit. Remember, you never take the Spirit out of this. You need the Spirit. If you find it hard to be kind, let the Holy Spirit help you. Let the Holy Spirit show you how. Let the Holy Spirit point you into, in the right direction. But you have to pray to God concerning this. It has to be a desire of your heart to change, to be better. Remember the third characteristic that I talked about. It can be better. Even when you do show some kindness and you know in your heart or hearts that you could do better, it can be better. But it requires the strength of Christ. It requires the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It requires the help of God. So don't go about doing it on your own. And please, don't give up. There is the tendency to say or think that that's how I've been made. You know, that's my nature. 
I don't need to change. No, please never go down that route. It's to identify a gap. Once it's identified, ensure you take it to Christ in prayer. Uh, Lord, this is where I need help. I want to be better at this. I want to be better at this. And let that be a prayer point for you in the name of Jesus. I don't want us to take all of this lightly. That's why we're doing this as a series. That's why we're starting with this this year. Because more than ever before this year, the fruit that you bear will be very important. Not just to you, but also to those around you. You can be and will be a blessing unto others. But as you serve the fruit of the Spirit that is from you, that is in you, you want that fruit to be good fruit. You want that fruit to be the best it can be. That as you give the fruit of the Spirit, it is the best fruit that can possibly be. As you bless others, as you help others, that's the best thing ever. So my prayer is that you will be fully prepared to live the life that Christ has ordained for all his children to live. To be a light in this world, to be the salt of the earth, to be a blessing unto people. Remember that as you do this, you are not left out of the equation. You are also partaking of the goodness that is all around you. My prayer is that the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, you will see in the name of Jesus. So, the fruit of the Spirit and you. Bear good fruit and it shall be well with you. It shall be well with everyone all around you in the name of Jesus. Even in Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10, it says it very clearly. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10, it says that say to the righteous that it shall be well with them for they shall eat the fruit of their doing say to the righteous that it shall be well with them for they shall eat the fruit of their doing you would also partake of it but it will not just be you it will be everyone else around you i just want to encourage you along that line let your fruit be perfect let your foot be perfect. And how do you make it perfect? Is it by putting in the effort? No. It is by bearing fruit solely by the strength of Christ, by the enablement of Christ, by the grace of the living God. And it shall be so unto you in the name of Jesus. Father in heaven, King of glory, we bless your holy name. We thank you, O God, because our fruit bearing is dependent on you. On our own we will fail, but with you, O oh God, with you we can bear perfect fruit. For this, Father, we say thank you. Heavenly Father, we pray that the fruit of the Spirit that we bear, that it shall be perfect in you in the name of Jesus. Where anyone is lacking, O oh God, is lacking an element of the fruit of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would help and guide in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I pray that none of us, O oh God, shall ever be cut off from you. We want to continuously bear good fruit on you. Heavenly Father, no one can bear fruit outside of you. We pray, God, that nothing shall separate us from your love in the name of Jesus. And each and every one of us will bear much fruit in the strength of the Almighty God. Let that be our portion in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, O God, for your voice that we have heard today. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you continue to guide us. Lord Jesus, that in the salvation that you granted unto us, O God, will be permanent in the name of Jesus. That it is well with us all around in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And Lord God Almighty, I pray for everyone who is a part of this service, that as they go into a new week, O God, that Heavenly Father, you go ahead of them in the name of Jesus and prepare the path that they will walk through in Jesus' name. That nothing shall slow them down. And as you have promised us as a church, oh God, this year, that fullness of joy is our portion in the name of Jesus. That all will be filled with joy in the name of Jesus. And you will make every one of them a source of joy even unto others in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. 
In Jesus' mighty and awesome name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. The fruit of the Spirit and you. The fruit of the Spirit will always be found in you. In the name of Jesus. This brings us to the end of our service today. I pray you've been blessed. And I pray that you join us again next week. As we continue on this, uh, on this series, The Fruit of the Spirit and You. God bless and keep you in the name of Jesus. And as we close, as always, let's bless ourselves. The words of 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14 and Psalm 23, verse 6. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Remain blessed in Jesus' name, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.